when trouble comes, storm begin to rise. Hold on and learn to stretch out. If you keep on fasting, keep on believing. Hold on and learn to. War the race isn't given to the swift. And neither is the battle to the strong. But to him that endure to the end. Stretch out. Oh. Okay. Let me let me start this right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house. Okay? Well, we talk about this stuff that don't nobody want to talk about. And I'm going to have to address this because a few people have been leaving me comments on this video, on this vlog. And I think y'all need to be addressed. Okay? First of all, I'm, I'm a lover of gospel music. I'm a granddaughter of a bishop. I'm a daddy of a minister. I, I mean, I have a, <laughs> I'm a daughter of a minister. First of all, let's start this. I come from a long line of bishops and uh, pastors. Okay? Um, and me saying that, growing up in the dogma of religion, I think I'm a perfect person to make uh, comments about the hypocrisy that I have experienced as a child and that has affected me as an adult, okay? Y'all don't get to tell people who've been abused by church people to uh, go sit down and uh, that happened a long time ago. You don't, you don't get to do that. Now, if you want to do that with your molestation, and if you want to do that with your issue, that's fine and dandy. But for those who have been abused by the church and members in it, and they realize through therapy or whatever else that, wow, that was a mad house I was in, or wow, that was a house of ill repute or a house of hypocrisy, they have every right. Let's get that straight, first and foremost. I'm finding it now a little difficult to listen to some of y'all that are actually angry with me uh, because I choose to speak about the hypocrisy. I've seen too much of it, whether it's been my uh, parents, my grandparents, my aunts, uncles, whoever it's been. And I think that I've been through the religion the religion gamut. And so I choose to help free people that have been abused by the church. Okay? Because I want them to know it wasn't their fault. I also want them to know that just as the Catholic Church had a bunch of uh, pedos in it, you have the same thing amongst the black church. So there is a listener, and I want to give a shout out to you, Catfish. Catfish Johnson said, we as a race of color, we love to bring our own, I'm sure it's serious, I'm thinking he means own race. We seem to bring our down, always finding fault. Have you looked at yourself? What you have done this man has been dead for a decade. We still bringing, we still bringing him down. Finding, um, let me finish. We still him bringing him down. Um. Okay. Uh, uh, um, I'm, I'm sorry. Let me go back up here. This is Sudi. Uh, I made a mistake about the uh, deliverer of this message. Uh, we still bring him down, finding fault to destroy his reputation. We love mess. 
we love thinning and proving of someone that's not our business. That's between him and his God. If he did these things, he is being accused of. Let me uh, let the man sleep and take his rest. God knows he made a difference when he walked the earth. Now, it's your turn to do positive things uh, to make the world a better place. Instead of stirring up trouble, the old song, May the work I've done speak for me. Let me tell you something. First of all, let me get you straight right now at Suki J788. Um, because somebody is dead, it does not negate the harm that they did when they were alive. Okay? Uh, Jeffrey Dahmer is dead. I watched him eat up everybody in my community damn near. And you think I was supposed to make no comments about it? Huh? Oh, I was supposed to say, oh, well, he resting dead in peace. Now, don't say nothing about it. And there's people, there's families who are affected 30 years later at what this cannibal did to my community. Now, because you don't know me, you don't know what I've done. But I guarantee you one thing, I've done more than you. In my community, in my church, in my, uh, I, I can guarantee you that. Okay? I don't even know you. But I can guarantee you that because I know the work I put in and have put in. So, with that being said, Sudi J788, I find it repulsive that you can make an assessment about me and you don't even know me. So, what you need to do is do your research on me. Milwaukee, Selma, of the North. Look at that. Read that book if you read. That's my that's my father. Okay, who was a, a, a actually when um, Malcolm left the Nation of Islam, he started Muslim Mosque Incorporated, which my father ran here in the city I live in. Check my pedigree. Okay, so I don't need to prove nothing to you, but I will say to you, I know a whole lot of people that contracted AIDS being in church. I know a whole lot of people that I set up and cried and prayed with because I had been removed. And even though these had been my relatives that had done damage or felt uh, made these people feel less than or whatever, I felt a sense of community when I listened to their problems. I listened to, I consider myself part of the solution when I can have the courage to say what these people did to you is wrong. Okay? And I'm not going to up under the rug, sweep that dirt. I'm not going to do that. And I suggest none of y'all do that. None of y'all do that because that's what's wrong with us as a society. We want to go hallelujah, Jesus, 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 and think that make all the hurt go away. Uh-uh. That's not how any of this works. OK. Uh, Jacoby said there is a family friend that sang and played for Cleveland and would tell us these things in the late 80s and until the 90s before his passing. I'm not surprised. The New Day fellas like Kirk, Donnie. Well, listen, I don't have a. Uh, OK, let me finish. Uh, Donnie uh, and whoever else. Now, it's your turn to do the positive to make the world a better place. Okay. Uh, that was Sudi again, but I'm saying Eddie Hezekiah Walker. I'm sure that's who they meant. Donnie McClurkin. We can keep going. It's a darn shame. So obviously, Jacoby got a different opinion than you do, Sudi. Okay, and I'm not saying this to just single you up because a lot of uh, Christian people feel that way, and then they got a lot of dead bodies, a trail of them of people that were hurt, marginalized, just like the white church and the Catholic church. The same thing, same abuse. Because to them, it ain't. Now, what you need to do is do a little bit more studying about where your religion and your Christianity come from so you won't give it all your wrong power 
and grab some real power and know how to confront the things in your life that have you stuck. And that's all I attempted to do here. Because there are people that email me. There are people that say things to me every day about the relationship that they did and had encountered in church. You ever had anybody stick a bottle up your rectum? And that's a pastor? You ever had you ever faced that kind of abuse? Oh, what am I supposed to be quiet about that? No, it's always the church people that's talking crazy. And I'm not here for it. Let me, you know, there's let me just get this article to you. Reverend James Cleveland, and I don't I don't have nothing against gay people, straight people. This is not what this conversation is about. It's about the hypocrisy. Okay? Everybody know the damn uh choir director is gay. I hate the hypocrisy that you got the nerve to sit up there in the pulpit and talk about. And he show up at your church every day, every Sunday, and you break his spirit. But at the same time, you allowing them to direct your uh, uh, choir, play your organ, play your piano, play your guitar, play your bass, play your drums, play your coolers. I don't want to hear Cletus. Now, this article was from pimppreacher.com. As many of you know, the late king of gospel died of AIDS. When they say certain public figures died of heart failure, pneumonia, or any other affiliated disease, uh, it is most likely a, con a connection with the acquired immune deficiency syndrome. And this is why you will hear reports that uh, reveal any other name other than AIDS, a prolonged disease connected to the homosexual community which historically first took the lives of gay white men. Now, although the journalists of this blog will forever love and respect the late uh, great James Cleveland, I know I do. Uh, peace, be still. Do, do, do. Peace, be still. Girl, I knew James Cleveland probably before you was even born. But he don't get a pass. You know, I don't get a pass. Now, the truth must be told. The discreet lifestyle of the late Reverend James Cleveland, possibly the caravans, any other gospel artists who are still alive, place the gospel music and the gospel industry into the hands of Satan himself. The gospel music industry is no longer ruled by God. If you grew up on gospel music before the destruction occurred, they said in the mid to late 80s, then you will recall preaching styles and the recording of the songs and the music by some of the great gospel artists. Not only James Cleveland, but also Shirley Caesar, and the late Charles Fold, and Donald Bales, Timothy Wright, Bishop J.C. White, Reverend James Moore. Y'all remember James Moore? Oh, Lord. Reverend C.L. Franklin, who some say was the biggest freak on this side of the hemisphere. I, it's okay for me to say that. And I love Reverend Franklin, and I love his daughter even more. Gospel fans really got the message, a clear message of repentance, faith, hope, and you could easily cry when these gospel artists spoke to your soul. Don't you realize it is only the pain that you have gone through that allows you to sing so beautifully? If you hear an artist, not exonerate myself, who, ha who sings very beautifully, and I don't need nobody to tell me that I don't. I've been singing like this and in church since I was a kid and We've been recording records since I was 13. But I do know the more pain that comes along with that singing, the more depth you'll get from the song. Okay? There's no comparison to secular music. 
gospel music used to seriously be about soul saving, no hypocrisy of singing songs to make money and to please the world and not call them into repentance while claiming to be a present message which is absent in most inspirational songs today. You need to know that AIDS destroyed a lot of lives in the black community. And in my church, it took so many. I had a carrier in my church who infected a whole lot of young men with AIDS. Many of the Pentecostal and Baptist preachers, not just the Reverend uh, James Cleveland, but a whole bunch of them. Many preachers and great bishops, all sorts of denominations, from Kojic to Apostolic, AME, and others were affected by AIDS. Don't y'all know that? Get your head out your kulu. Stand upright. While AIDS was destroying preachers in the pulpits, it had reached all through the choirs and took the lives of the closeted gay men, even family men who were fathers and grandfathers in the pews. See, I grew up in this time. And you want me to keep quiet about it? Because James Cleveland is dead? And so many others that were affected by uh, and looked up to him? Yeah, I'm not saying that he uh, great them. I'm not saying that they didn't... Uh, go willingly, but, but we've already got laws that says that kids can't consent to sex. Kids can't consent to this kind of stuff. Okay? And what's done in the dark will certainly come to the light. That's what my granddaddy used to always tell me. The message was lost. And it is like a forever bereavement of various lives that were lost in the epidemic as AIDS swept and killed many in our community. Many wives and children became infected along with the drug user. What you think about that? What about the woman in church that thought she had a straight man and he infected her with AIDS? She's supposed to be quiet too, huh? She wasn't ready to die. She wasn't willing to contract this disease. The only thing she did was marry a gay man. I know him like that right now in the community. I got a gay man in me right now because I asked him, did his wife know that he used to sleep with men? He ain't spoke to me since. We grew up together. I didn't think it was a problem for me to ask him that. Because, see, I'm real about mine. Because t church taught me how to be secretive. Taught me how to lie. Taught me not how to come to grips with who I am. What I like. And that uh, I wasn't going to be put in hell by people. It's just that simple. And when you focus on one sin and not the other, I know that's hypocrisy. Because we all sin and fall short. But if your heart recognizes that every day is a struggle, that's what the Bible, that's what the good news tell you. That's why I say don't, don't, you don't got to judge people by admitting who you are. Stop being fake. Black people in a community became ignorant and are very hypocritical regarding this disease. They would often mistreat those who they knew were infected but did not even know that they were also infected and reaped the same prejudice as it still occurs today. So, the case of the late, great James Cleveland was only known because he was the king of gospel. The most powerful gospel legend of all times. However, there was a consequence of his death. Y'all got to face that. It ain't, you got to face, you can't fix what you can't face. You have a, a lot of people who are wounded sexually, not just by a gay person. It could have been their own stepfather, could have been their father, could have been their uncle, their brother, whoever. People who have been damaged by the church. 
And y'all, again, need to get your heads out of your behind so we can deal with this, our wounds, and lick them and heal them so we can be a stronger people and bridge the gap between hypocrisy and reality. Uh, listen, I just wanted to make sure I touched them. I'm not going to be on here all day. But I like to sweep around my door. And I have. Um, and I and I, I will continue to. And I suggest and I pray that you do the same. So it's nothing personal between y'all who wanted to tell me what I should be doing. It's not personal. I just want to address you and let you know where I'm coming from, okay? Because I'm not going to just stick my head in the sand and because I'm talking about we're a race of people. Yeah, we're a race of people that hate each other too. We kill each other because we don't love one another. And you got the nerve to put that noose around my neck? All right. I'm going to go. If you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share the video. And uh, I'm going to see you in the next video.